that come from the App Store all end up right here in Notification Center. And we've even added stocks and weather right up top. Now, we didn't stop there. Notifications are no longer interrupting. So now if you're playing a game and someone sends you, say, a text message, you get a nice animation from the top, it's right there. You can keep on playing your game, and it'll automatically dismiss itself. You could have just tapped on it, and it would take you to that app. But it doesn't matter, because you can always get back to it at any time just by swiping your finger down from the top. We've also improved the lock screen. You can see more information for notifications here. And one of my favorite features is for any one of the notifications in the lock screen, you can just slide your finger across it, and it takes you directly to the app that sent the notification. And let me go ahead and just show this to you now. So I've got a phone here running iOS 5. You can see more information there. Now I'm just going to swipe my finger right across that text message, and it takes me directly to the Messages app and right into the conversation. It's really convenient. Now to get to the Notification Center, just swipe my finger down from the top, and there it is. Dismiss it by swiping up. Really nice animation. You can see that we're still in winter here in San Francisco. <laughs> I get all of my messages here, so text messages and scoring alerts. Down at the bottom here, I have some alerts from MLB.com uh, at bat. If I tap on that X button, I can just go ahead and clear that out. If I see another notification, like the Facebook one, I tap on it, takes me directly to the Facebook app. So it's really convenient. And at any time again, swipe down from the top, and you get back to Notification Center. And that is Notification Center. <laughs> Number two is Newsstand. You know, I love reading newspapers and magazines right on my iPhone and my iPad. And recently, we added subscriptions. And this makes it easier for you to get all the new issues without missing anything. Already, most of the major publishers of magazines and many of newspapers have signed up to support subscriptions. Now, these are incredible titles, things like National Geographic and spin, so great music magazines. And of course, when you read these on your iPad, you get audio and video in addition to all the articles. Vanity Fair, science magazines like Popular Mechanics and Popular Science, Esquire, and GQ, fashion magazines like Elle, the Oprah magazine, tech magazines like Wired, and automobile magazines, and sports magazines, the New Yorker, and newspapers, new ones like the Daily, but also the New York Times, the San Francisco Chronicle, Daily Telegraph, and other international papers. And we've now created a single place right in the App Store that combines all of these newspaper and magazines, so you can find them all in one place. When you purchase them, they're automatically downloaded and placed in the newsstand. It's a new place right on the home screen. It looks like this beautiful news rack. In addition to this, we do background downloads. So if a new issue comes out, say, of a newspaper while you're sleeping, when you wake up and pick up your iPad, that new newspaper is already there, ready for you to read it. And you can read it offline. <laughs> On top of this, we set the cover to be the front page of the new newspaper. And we'll set it to be the cover of the new magazine for magazines. So that is Newsstand. <laughs> Next is Twitter. Now, as I'm sure everyone's familiar, uh, Twitter is an incredibly popular service. People send more than a billion tweets per week. 
And we hear from a lot of our customers on iPhone and iPad and iPod Touch that they love Twitter. And so we want to make it even easier for all of our customers to use Twitter on iOS products. We're doing a number of things for this. First, we're adding single sign-on. So now, when you go to the Settings app that's built in on the iPhone or iPad, you can enter your username and password, and now you're configured for Twitter. For any app you download off the App Store, it'll just say, can I use your credentials? When you say yes, you're logged in. You don't need to re-log in every single time. So single sign-on. <laughs> Next, we've integrated Twitter in with many of our apps, like camera and photos. So now if you're at a concert and you take a photo and you want to tweet that photo, just tap on the action button. It's a new option, tweet. And it brings up this beautiful tweet sheet. Gives you a nice thumbnail of the photo. Gives you a countdown of how many characters you have left to type. And you can even optionally add your location. Tap on that. And now you've tweeted the photo. It's that simple. In addition to tweeting from photos and camera, you can tweet articles from Safari, websites. You can tweet videos from YouTube. And you can tweet about businesses or locations for maps. Beyond all of this, we added integration with contacts. Now, you might have a lot of contacts that don't have photos. But Twitter may have photos for those people. And so you can use Twitter to automatically update the photos in your contact list and even the at username for your friends. And that's Twitter integration throughout the OS. <laughs> Next is Safari. You know, Safari is the best mobile web browser out there. It's also the most popular. In fact, nearly two thirds of all mobile web browsing is done on Safari. Beyond this, we took Apple's Safari engine and open sourced it. And it's the basis of all web browsing on Android. <laughs> so the Safari engine is the basis of more than 90% of all web browsing on mobile devices. Well, in iOS 5, we're making Safari even better. We've got some great features. The first is Reader. Safari Reader becomes available up here as a new button when you're reading a story on a website. If you just tap on that button, we take the story you're reading and make it front and center. We get rid of all the distractions, set the font size right, and even if it's a multi-page story, so you'd have to tap through multiple web pages normally to get to it, we put it in a single scrolling story. It's really convenient. On top of that, you can now email the contents of the story. Before, you could just email the link. But now, when you email, you get the link plus the contents in your Compose window. And all, <laughs> and all of this works really well on the iPad. It works great on the iPhone as well. It's a perfect size for it. It sets the font size right. It's really nice to read stories. So that's Safari Reader. The second one is Reading List. Reading List is a simple and convenient way for you to quickly save a story to read it later. You just put it in the Reading List. And when you add an item to Reading List, it gets added to the Reading List on all of your iOS devices, and even the Reading List on Safari on Mac and Safari on Windows. So if you don't have time to finish it here on the iPad, you can finish reading it later on your iPhone. And the next feature is tab browsing. We have added full tab browsing on Safari on the iPad. And you know, let me just show it to you. All right. So here I have my iPad running iOS 5. I'll launch Safari here. And the first thing you'll see with tab browsing is it is lightning fast to switch between windows now. Just tap on it, and you're there. Great. Now I'm on uh, the DP review site, which is a fantastic review site for cameras. 
and they have really extensive reviews. In fact, you normally have to tap through many, many pages to read the whole review. If I look at this one here, it's uh, 20 pages long. Well, if I tap the reader button here, it loads the entire story up in reader. Now I can just scroll through, it gets rid of all the distractions, lets me concentrate just on the content. That is reader. You even see that when it goes between pages here, where you would have had to you know, tap to say next page, it automatically gives you a little page break so you know when it's going through those pages. Now let's say if I don't have time to finish the story right now, I can just tap the bookmarks bar item, and uh, here I have reading list. I tap plus, and now it's added this to my reading list, and again, I can go finish this on Mac, on, uh, you know, on Safari on my Mac, or any of my other iOS devices. It's great. And if I really like this and I want to tweet about it, let me show you the Twitter integration while we're here. If I tap tweet, brings up the tweet sheet. We do completion, so I have a, hit, I have a friend, uh, Gary Dunn, so I hit at G, automatically fills in the name, tap that, and I can say, you know, I like this one. And I could optionally add my location, tap send, and it's tweeted. It's that easy. So some really great Safari enhancements and Twitter integration throughout. All right, next up is reminders. You know, all of us are constantly creating lists of things, lists of things to do, lists of things to buy, like a grocery list. Some of them have a place associated, like you know, don't forget to walk the dog when I get home. And some have a time associated, say buy concert tickets Monday at 10 a.m., so that's when they go on sale. Wouldn't it be great if you get rid of all these scraps of paper and store all this on your phone. But beyond that, if your phone actually reminded you to do things as opposed to just statically keeping a list of things, well, that's exactly what the Reminders app does. On the Reminders app, you can store lists of things, multiple lists, so things for a trip to San Francisco or a birthday party or a grocery list. You can store uh, dates associated with these reminders. So you'll be reminded on that date. You can also assign location. This is really cool. I could set up a reminder to say, remind me to call my wife when I leave the, the convention today. And it'll set a geofence up around Moscone Center, and so when I get in my car to leave, it'll pop up and say call. <laughs> it solves the problem of, I'm leaving right now, I promise. <laughs> call in the car. You can, of course, search through all your reminders, and reminders will sync with iCal on the Mac using CalDAV, and even with Outlook on Windows using Exchange. And that is reminders. <laughs> Next is camera. You know, the iPhone 4 is widely regarded as having one of the best cameras on a mobile phone. It's also one of the most popular. In fact, if you look at cameras used to take photos and then post them to Flickr, now this is all cameras, not just uh, cameras on phones. You see where the iPhone 4 is. It is already by far the most popular camera on a phone to take photos, and it very soon will be the most popular camera overall. But we want to make using the camera even better, and that's what we're doing. The first thing we're doing is making it way faster to just get in and take a photo. So now, if there's some moment happening, your kid's doing something really cute, you want to capture it, you double click that home button, you get a new camera icon. When you tap on that camera icon, you're brought directly and immediately to the camera and you're ready to take a photo. Now, what's really cool about this is even if you have a passcode set, we'll take you right in to take a new photo. 
We'll protect it, and you can't see any previous photos you've taken or anything else on the phone without typing your passcode. But you can start taking a passcode a, a, a picture immediately. And you can even use the volume.